realize that we're seeing more and more of our clients here mm -hmm. through our intensive residential treatment programs and our intensive uh, partial program mm -hmm. and IOP program, a fair number of them um, have an adoption experience and it has had an effect. So um, we um, rely on resources like, like LC and her book, uh, which is a really cool workbook, which we've started using, our clinicians are using. It's got lots of uh, handouts and readings. You can pretty much start anywhere and have something to um, inform your work as a clinician. So um, please welcome uh, Elsie Bolt. And then imagine you're a pregnant mother, you know, a pregnant mother who knows she needs to relinquish her baby for whatever reason, you know, whether it's financial issues, conception through rape, substance abuse, and now you're going to say goodbye to your baby. That's a stressful situation. I would say that's an extremely stressful situation. So that baby's brain is being formed in that kind of stress as well. So there's like so many different layers. So we've talked about these major losses, the story, the history, the stories, the genetic, the medical, the loss of trust as a first experience, and then the loss of being able to like trust throughout your life on a level that other people can. The loss of physical and mental health. And then this last one is that no one buys it, <laughs> like, or they minimize it, or they, they, they want to redirect you from talking about it, or they want to, um, they want you to just like try to see the good side. And I don't think people should live in victimhood. I, I'm not that kind of person. Um, but you have to feel it and grieve it to get to healing. And society doesn't, for in general, is really not interested in letting adoptees wonder and grieve. It's just not. Um, it's just not the norm. And that happens all the time. I mean, I can't tell you, I see some adoptees shaking their heads because you know, it's like a normal, normal part of our, our experience is like redirect, don't talk about it, minimize. It's like the only trauma that you're not allowed to talk about. Um, and what happens when you can't do that? This was some writing from an adoptee. Um, I think it really illustrates it well. This was an adoptee who was in reunion and then told by his birth family that they should feel lucky. Th that happens too. You're getting the lucky thing from every side. Mm -hmm. So it's just this suppress, suppress it, suppress it. Don't feel it, don't feel it. I don't know why we do it with adoption so much and nothing else, but maybe it's too much for people to really understand. I got sober and when adoptees get sober, the relational piece is extremely difficult. And a big part of the addiction recovery, which is important, is this peer support piece. It is um, relational. And it's important because you have to practice being uncomfortable to heal things.